All right. Welcome. Welcome to the 26th annual Awards for Excellence in Environmental Education Celebration. Together, we have a vision that all Coloradans have the opportunity for environmental and outdoor learning every day. And you are all making that vision a reality across the state. This year, we are taking some inspiration from Enos Mills, one of Colorado's early advocates for outdoor and environmental learning. Nature is an educational stimulus of rare force. The crumbling cliff, the glacial landscape, the wild free clouds, birds and trees compel children, old and young, to observe and think. They bring development and sympathy, they build the brain, they increase courage and kindness. Scenes and sunsets, cloud and storm, the stars in the sky, the music of the wind and water, the purple forests, the white cascades, the colored flowers, the songs of the birds, the untrimmed and steadfast trees, the shadows on the ground, the tangled grass, the round sunny hills, the endless streams, the magic rainbow, and the mysterious echo. All these arouse thought, wonder, and delight in the mind of every child. And they have been the immortal nourishment of the great souls who have come from Mother Nature's loving breast to bless and beautify the world. Enos Mills was one of the early advocates for outdoor and environmental learning. And we continue to be inspired by his work and his writing today. One of the greatest gifts that Enos Mills left us is his vision of nature guides, outdoor enthusiasts, and naturalists inspiring others to explore wild places, protect grand vistas, and conserve America's natural landscapes. Every day, environmental educators embody Enos's vision by sharing their passion for the outdoors with others and ensuring that our profession is one of continued importance and distinction. I think vision is so important for outdoor and environmental learning because it's what drives us at the end of the day. I think if we don't have a clear vision of what we want the field to look like, we can often get stuck. So I think having a vision that excites us and motivates us is what's really important. And so if we carry the vision for the work forward and allow it to inform us as practitioners as well, we won't get stagnant. We won't be like that stream that just doesn't flow and eventually dries up. We will keep ourselves moving. We will keep this field growing. Most people are able to find their own source of inspiration within nature. Nature in and of itself is highly inspiring. What environmental and outdoor learning does is it not only deepens that inspiration by teaching about those unseen connections that you can't find upon first glance, but it also gives us to move from inspiration to impact. I think sharing nature with others demonstrates a character of giving. It really is sharing a piece of yourself in the act of doing it. By engaging in these kind of learning programs, people have a chance to, to fall in love with the wild world, with the natural world around them and within themselves. People have a chance to form authentic relationships and deep connections that are personally meaningful and from those relationships I, you know natural action can arise to me that's the essence of environmental and outdoor learning is that that inspiration is the seed for impact buildings and our communities are all powerful tools for learning and we're here today to celebrate the people and the organizations who bring those learning opportunities to life. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Katie Naven. I have the honor of being 
the executive director of the Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education. We're so excited that you're here with us today. We also want to take a moment and welcome all those who are joining us online today. You will be muted throughout the program, but we invite you to use the chat if you have any questions or needs, and especially to comment and celebrate our award recipients today. Technology can sometimes be uncooperative, so I'm going to apologize in advance if there are any technical difficulties, but we are so, so glad that you could join us here today. We are so grateful to be here together with you today in person and virtually. And we wanna take a moment to acknowledge that we are gathering to celebrate on the stolen unceded lands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho and Ute peoples who stewarded this land for generations. Historically and today, white communities are often centered in environmental education and the contributions of black, indigenous and people of color are often excluded from our narratives. We all have a responsibility to continue working to change the systems that allow injustice and inequity to exist. There are so many people who dedicate their time and expertise to advancing environmental and outdoor learning here in Colorado and people who help make celebrations like today possible. We wanna thank our table sponsors, Colorado Parks and Wildlife and Boulder County Parks and Open Space and we especially want to thank our event sponsor, Barefoot PR. We had the opportunity to work with Barefoot on a national campaign called Outside for Five. And this campaign was designed to invite teachers to pledge to spend five minutes a day, five days a week, or any meaningful time learning outside. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, please share it far and wide. Barefoot PR generously provided the pro bono time to get the campaign off the ground. So let's give all of our sponsors a round of applause. Environmental and outdoor learning programs are making a huge impact across Colorado. We would love to kick off our celebration today with some of the incredible programs that are happening across the state. I'd love to invite Chris Obi, CAE's board president, up to the front of the room where he'll be presenting the award plaques to all of our recipients. So let's kick it off with our program awards. Innovation Environment. Education Program Award recognizes innovation, equity, and leadership. This year's recipients showcase the wide variety of ways that outdoor and environmental learning can build from inspiration to impact, using different approaches to teach about the environment by making learning relevant and by building lasting understanding. These programs inspire me to continue working hard every day to mitigate the effects of climate change and to partner with and teach others to do the same because together we can achieve so much more. Congratulations to our 2022 Innovation Education Program Award recipients. This is a student-directed leadership and job readiness program in which students learn and practice how to work individually and collectively to identify, understand, and address environmental issues that are important to them and their communities. Next, we are proud to recognize The Forest and Fire Field Course, a project of CU Science Discovery, Calwood Education Center, and Nature Kids Lafayette. This residential course immerses underrepresented teens in authentic STEM research 
and collective action in response to the urgent local issue of wildfire in order to better understand how to effectively foster and leverage constructive hope to inspire and motivate environmental action in a time of climate change nat driven natural disasters. Congratulations. Our next recipient is the Heart Force the Hazard Education Awareness and Resilience Task Force, a project of series education and outreach from CU Boulder. This youth and community engagement project inspires and empowers rural Colorado middle and high school teachers and their students to act as the change agents to build community resilience against locally relevant natural hazards such as wildfire, flood, and drought. Congratulations. Our final EE award recipient is the Northern Red Belly DACE project, a collaboration between Ocean First Institute, Boulder County Parks and Open Space, St. Brain Valley School District Innovation Center, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, the Denver Zoo, and Left Hand Watershed. They are working to restore a species of special concern in Boulder County and provide scientific experience for local students as they grow, release, and monitor fish under the supervision of wildlife professionals. In 2021, more than 800 dace were successfully bred, reared, and released through the collaborative project. Congratulations. One more round of applause for all of the amazing programs we're celebrating here today. Now we would love to celebrate some of the people who are making the difference across the state with environmental and outdoor learning. Our environmental educators and our youth leaders. First, we would love to recognize the educators who put the hard work in to become certified environmental educators in 2022. Certified environmental educators have demonstrated the highest standards and mastery and skill in environmental education. They have made a commitment to inspire others through their teaching and ensure they are providing impactful learning experiences. They are the people I look to for inspiration, new ideas, and leadership in the field. Congrats. 193 certified environmental Jordan. educators in Colorado. Let's give them a round of applause. We also want to recognize our leaders and mentors who have contributed decades of inspiring and impactful work in our communities. This year, we are recognizing Kirsten Copeland as an outstanding retiring environmental educator. Kirsten was hired in 1998 as the first female state park ranger on the Western Slope. She served as park manager for 16 of her 25 total years at Ridgeway State Park. Congratulations, and please come up and receive your award. Thank you for all you do. Next, we would like to recognize Colorado's incredible environmental educators with our Outstanding Environmental Educator Award and our Young Environmental Leader Award. Colorado has some of the highest quality individuals in the nation who serve as role models for environmental responsibility, inspire their audiences and peers, and create positive impacts in their communities and for our state. 
the Outstanding Environmental Educator Award recognizes the exceptional contributions and outstanding leadership of an environmental educator. Likewise, the Young Environmental Leader Award recognizes 14 to 23 year olds who are inspiring their peers and making a difference in their communities with environmental education. These educators are dedicated, creative, and inspiring. Congratulations to our 2020 about you. Erin Angel is a senior CAP instructor with the Cottonwood Institute in Denver. Let's give her a round of applause. Through her passion and hard work, Erin expands students' definition of nature to create equitable access to the outdoors. During the pandemic, Erin created Thrival Kits and hand-delivered activities and supplies to students at home, including new and creative lesson plans that used nearby parks to help students redefine what it meant to explore nature and outdoors wherever they were. Congratulations, Erin. Our next outstanding environmental educator is Stacy Wolf. Stacy has served as the K-5 science resource teacher at Flagstaff Academy for 11 years. In addition to facilitating science labs, she founded a student-led club focused on sustainability, a place-based education program for fifth graders, a scientific conference showcasing student research about PICA and a club for students to learn about space with NASA scientists. Thank you for all your work, Stacy. We are celebrating several young environmental leaders today. Our first recipient is Corey Hoyt. Corey is a leader in training for the Bird Conservancy of the Rockies. Corey has put in over 400 hours to the program over the last five years, during which he demonstrated leadership and inspired hundreds of campers to be stewards of the natural world. Thanks so much for all you do. Next, we want to recognize the TRC initiative, which includes Stella Corzine, Abby Fitzgerald, and Josie Carr from Peak to Peak Charter School. These outstanding students have changed their school by encouraging environmental practices. In addition to teaching their peers about the importance of recycling and composting and how to do it, their leadership in a collaboration with other nonprofits promoted how young people can make every career an environmental career at a recent global event. Thanks for all you do. Let's give one more round of applause for all of the amazing educators we're celebrating today. Before we present our final award, I am honored to make an exciting announcement on behalf of the awards committee. You may have noticed that we're not presenting an Enos A. Mills Lifetime Achievement Award this year. The awards committee has really put some time and thought into how environmental and outdoor learning has changed over the years and what we can lift up and celebrate and how we can continue to advance the field through this award. We spent a lot of time thinking about Enos Mills and the incredible legacy that he built here in Colorado and how we can continue to honor that with this award. So we want you to start thinking now about who to nominate for the Enos A. Mills Award for Exemplary Contribution to Environmental Education. This award will have new criteria centered around vision, character, practice, and impact. We do wanna take a moment to celebrate all the people whose vision and impact continues to be the foundation that supports environmental and outdoor learning today. 
So will all of our past Enos Mills recipients stand, or if you're online, turn on your camera and wave and be recognized, and let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much for your vision and your leadership and impact. Next, we would love to invite this year's recipient of the President's Award, Parker McMullen Bushman, founder and CEO of Eco Inclusive Strategies, to join us on the stage. The President's Award is selected by CAEE's Board of Directors to honor exceptional leadership in environmental preservation, sustainability, and education. These individuals and organizations are changing the systems that support environmental and outdoor learning. Our recipient this year embodies both inspiration and impact. Congratulations to our 2022 President's Award recipient, Parker McMullen Bushman. Parker, also known as Queen Work, is a social justice activist, anti-racism educator, environmentalist, speaker, artist, and business owner. Parker's background in nonprofit leadership, conservation, environmental education, and outdoor recreation spans over 24 years. Her interest in justice, accessibility, and equity issues developed from her personal experiences facing the unequal representation of people of color in environmental organizations and green spaces. Parker tackles these complex issues by addressing them through head-on activism and education. As the CEO and founder of Eco-Inclusive Strategies, Parker has worked with many nonprofits and environmental entities in environmental and outdoor learning to build culturally diverse and culturally competent organizations that are representative of the populations that they seek to reach and serve. She also founded the Summit for Action and is also the co-founder of Inclusive Journeys, a tech company working to identify safe and welcoming spaces for all. Please join me in recognizing Parker McMullen Bushman. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Uh, whew, it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> um, and I am overwhelmed with, with gratitude to have been selected to receive the 2022 President's Award for Excellence in Environmental Education. And thank you all uh, for being here today to share in this occasion with me. Um, I'm so honored to have my work recognized um, but, you know, if we were to be honest, statistically, I shouldn't be on this stage, right? Um, for the past 25 years, I've had the opportunity to work with environmental education and conservation organizations that have woven into their mission a commitment to raising environmental awareness in their local communities. And throughout my career, I've been passionate about finding new and meaningful ways to communicate science and conservation related issues to diverse audiences through interdisciplinary learning, conservation field experiences and stewardship programs. I truly believe that inclusion and equity have to be at the center of environmental work. And I believe strongly in the power of collaboration to hear the voices of our many community members and to create strong conservation solutions for things like climate and environmental justice issues. But statistically, I shouldn't be on this stage. As a plus size black woman, as a person who grew up in the Bronx in a space that people would call the inner city and many people wouldn't think of as a natural space. As a person who grew up in low income neighborhoods, as a person who never went camping as a child, as a person who didn't know what national parks were until I was well into my twenties, statistically, I shouldn't be on this stage. And the reason that I'm here, um, isn't necessarily because someone took a chance on me, though I have had lots of mentors and, and people who have helped me along the way. 
Um, the reason why I'm here is because I learned to understand my history and my background in a different way. You see, I fell into my career of environmental education. Let me tell you what I mean. I completed my bachelor's at the University of Illinois at Chicago with a degree in anthropology. After I graduated, I took out the local newspaper. There weren't a whole lot of jobs for Indiana Jones. Um, and so I started thinking about what my next step would be. Someone told me once that there were these jobs at residential environmental learning centers where they fed you, you lived on site, they paid you, and you taught kids about the environment. Now, I knew I needed the first three, and I thought I could live with the fourth one. So I started applying for jobs. And I remember my first environmental education job, it was a whole new world for me. And I quickly felt like I needed to change myself to assimilate. I felt like I needed to let go of the bright colors that I love to wear and the head wraps that I love to wear. I was like, I need to go right out and buy a fleece, right? <laughs> um, you see, when I first started my career, the image of an environmentalist and an outdoor recreation enthusiast was not reflective of me. And it was not reflective of my family and my community. And I felt like I was in a completely new world. I entered the field thinking of myself as not being outdoorsy. And after getting hired to be an environmental educator, I still had a lot of self doubt on whether or not I belonged in those spaces because I hadn't had the same outdoor experiences as my coworkers. You see, all the messages I ever got growing up and even as an adult about people who loved being outdoors was that you showed that love through doing things like climbing 14ers, sending it down a particularly gnarly ski slope or scaling the side of a cliff for the views, bro, right? And it took me a while to figure out that those weren't the only ways to love the outdoors. And it took me even longer to rewrite and think differently about my childhood and my connection to the outdoors. I eventually realized that I was very outdoorsy, but the ways that I used the outdoors were not represented in the traditional narrative about outdoor recreation and environmentalism. You see, although I never had an environmental education class until I was older, I had environmental educators throughout my childhood. The people in my life as I grew up taught me about caring about the environment around me. However, those lessons didn't fit into a box of traditional environmentalism. The memories of my childhood cemented my love of the outdoors, but no one helped me to make that connection to the mainstream. You see, I grew up in a really low income black community, but I learned the most about loving and caring for the environment from people that did not wear that label of environmentalism. My father taught me to recycle when he made me walk the city streets of the Bronx with him collecting aluminum cans and a shopping cart to take to the recycling center. We collected the cans because back in that time, you could turn them in to get five cents a can. So we collected them to earn money for my family. But as I walked those city streets, I noticed my environment around me. I gained a place. I noticed a trap on the ground that we left behind and started asking questions about it. I noticed that trees that grew out of the boxes in the sidewalks. And I knew that it was an important thing that we were, taking, were, were doing by taking some of the trash off of the streets. My grandmother taught me to reuse, have me wash that we use after they were used and put upside down in the drying rack or with her stacks of Cool Whip containers that were her Tupperware set. My grandmother washed the clothes by hand and out on the line outside and how new clothes eventually became washcloths, became dust rags, became quilts because everything had a second, third and fourth life. I think about my uncle who could never afford to buy a car. So he would ride his bike 30, 40 miles back and forth to work every day. And no one told him he was a 
speaker that bring carbon emissions and helping to stop climate change. I walked five, I regularly walked four miles to a friend's house on the weekends. No one was a hiker. I caught crabs back field at my grandmother's house, house in South Carolina, walking. No one told me I was a waterman or a fisherman. I went swimming in the river in shorts and a shirt because I didn't own a baby suit and we couldn't afford a membership to the local. I turned over rocks and collected specimens and showed them to my friends and no one told me, oh, you're leading a macro invertebrate class, right? <laughs> Often we don't value the actions done out of necessity the same way as we value the actions done by choice. But I believe that we have to see a larger picture and understand that a future of environmentalism must be rooted in a multifaceted view of what conservation looks like. Uh, NAAAE has the tagline that says environmental education is the education that we need for the world that we want. And in tackling some of the most foremost global challenges today, we have to draw upon a new playbook for social engagement. If we wanna make access, connection, and enjoyment of the outdoors equitable, we have to understand that representation of all ways that people love nature is important. And we need to connect to communities in ways that they understand to develop innovative measures that will catalyze local action and reaffirm relationships between people and nature. And as environmentalists, we understand that all living things are connected to one another and that the real call is to re-examine the system that we all are living in and work to build new solutions. We're being called to join forces with one another, working toward a shared vision of a future where our collective humanity is equitably recognized and honored and where we can envision a thriving planet and a healthier, more equitable future for us all. And I think that that's a vision that would have a really large impact if we all work together for it. So today, I want to accept this award for all of the environmental educators in my life that didn't have that title. I accept this award for my mother and my father who taught me to lay on grass and collect uh, and pick up cans. I uh, accept this award for my grandma, Puccinuni, who taught me the value of reusing things and keeping them out of the landfill. I accept this award for my uncle Dennis, who taught me that riding a bike is a noble way to travel. And for all of my ancestors who worked our connection to nature into the very blood that runs through my, my veins. And thank you all, and I thank them all for my connection to nature and the outdoors. And I thank you all for this honor. So, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Parker, for moving the needle to create a more equitable Colorado. We so appreciate all of your work. At CAE, we support the many types of educators, like the amazing educators recognized here today, who teach concepts we all need to understand. How natural systems work, what we must do to interact responsibly with the environment, how we can protect natural resources for future generations, and we spread the joy of connecting with nature and the world around us. We believe that we are better together. Our network and working together is the key to taking environmental and outdoor learning to scale in Colorado. Together, we can share learnings, approaches, and advocate as a group for widespread adoption of environmental and outdoor learning. 
When you came here today, many of you might not have known what we were gonna ask you for in terms of your financial support. We would love to invite you to make an investment in this network and what we can do together. There are QR codes on each of the tables that will take you to our giving page and where you can make a donation. There are also envelopes on the tables if that is easier. Together, we are an extensive circuitry of individuals and organizations who are making an impact with environmental and outdoor learning. So as you're making your donation, I invite you to dedicate your donation to your favorite environmental and outdoor educators and or organizations. Could be the ones we celebrated here today and their powerful work or others in your communities. You can also use that same QR code to pop up and leave comments on the page and celebrate those educators if you just scroll down to the bottom. We'd love to see as many comments celebrating the great work that's happening across the state as we can. So many of you have invested in this network and in the last year we have accomplished a lot together. We launched a newly revised Colorado Environmental Education Plan in collaboration with Colorado Department of Education and the Colorado Parks and Wildlife. We developed new self-paced online outdoor and environmental learning professional development courses that enable educators to participate no matter where they are on their own time. We also unveiled the new greenpathways.org website in collaboration with the Colorado Youth Corps Association to help youth find and explore this incredible circuitry of opportunities offered by this network to learn about environmental and outdoor career opportunities. We also placed 20 AmeriCorps members with EE organizations around the state to expand the reach of environmental and outdoor learning by over 23,000 students and teachers, and so much more. So I wanna say thank you to all of you for investing in this network with your time, with your expertise, and with your donations. We are so much better together. So let's give a round of applause for all of you. While you finish filling out donations, I do wanna thank a few people who made this event possible today. Uh, we wanna thank our incredible awards committee, especially our co-chairs, Mary McCormick and Bevan Carruthers. For all of the hard work and efforts that went into planning and selecting the incredible programs and people that we recognized today. We also want to thank CAE's board of directors and our staff team for their leadership, energy, and commitment they have for environmental education in Colorado. Let's give all of our committee and our board and our staff a round of applause. As we wrap up here today, I do want to give one more round of applause for all of the absolutely incredible programs and educators that we recognize here today. They are doing such powerful work across the state. I am so proud to be a part of this network that is always growing, sharing with each other in order to ensure that all Coloradans have opportunities for outdoor and environmental learning every day. We hope you are inspired by the programs and the people recognized here today. Environmental and outdoor learning has the power to lift our spirits, support our wellness, and spark the agency that allows us to take care of our communities and our environment. As educators and environmental education supporters, thank you for all you do to advance environmental and outdoor learning every single day. Thank you for being a part of this community and a part of this alliance. Thank you so much for joining us here today, both virtually and in person. For our virtual friends, we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. 
For the folks who are here in person, we hope you can take some time to connect with each other. And we haven't had as many opportunities to be in the same room. So we hope some of those connections are happening today. And if you are an award recipient, I'd love you to join us over in this corner of the room. We're gonna grab some photos. And I just wanna thank everyone again to support environmental and outdoor learning. Have a wonderful day.